Good after, or good morning. This is Carl Blackstone with the Columbia Chamber. We're thrilled that y'all are on today with us. We're delighted to have Steve Benjamin, our mayor of Columbia, uh, joining us. And uh, let me, a couple of housekeeping things right quick. Um, we've got y'all on mute so we could actually hear. We've got over 125 folks have dialed in, and sometimes with that many folks on a conference call, it gets kind of loud. So, um, Steve, if if you're okay with this, if, if folks have questions for you, virtually you can just log in and, and on your if you're uh, listening through your computer, you can there's a place to type a question. Feel free to type a question and we'll get it to Steve. Uh, if you are listening on a phone call, if you if you want to email me info at columbiachamber.com, if you have a question, we'll get it to the mayor or one of his staffers to get uh, questions answered for you. That's info at ColumbiaChamber.com. Uh, we're also going to be joined here just momentarily with Lou Kennedy uh, with Nephron as well for a quick update. Uh, so when she jumps on, uh, we'll let her have a few minutes as well. Uh, Steve, unprecedented times. That's, that's an understatement, Carl. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely Ooh. unprecedented times. Can you guys hear me okay? Is, is the sound quality okay? Yeah, I can hear you. And I think we just got – Lou, how are you? Um, I, Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Finally clicked over. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, before we get to, to Steve, Lou, uh, Lou is president uh, of uh, Nephron Pharmaceuticals, and y'all have been um, turning some stuff out. Can you give a quick update on what you're doing? Yes. Uh, so the, the folks on the call know, Nephron manufactures and has done so for 22 years, respiratory nebulizer solutions. So not uh, the products that are known as inhalers that come in a small canister. We make the solutions that go into a little machine called a nebulizer that creates a mist, which then opens the patient's airway so that you can get oxygen into your lungs and prevent bronchospasms and so forth. Our business is just shooting through the roof as hospitals are stocking up everywhere. And so we consider all Nephron employees essential. Everyone's showing up. We're cleaning our common areas the same way that we clean our clean rooms. And so we're uh, basically bathing all these areas in hydrogen peroxide fog. We are also producing hand sanitizer. We've delivered it to the first hospital and certainly to all the Nephron employees. We're doing that as we speak. And I've just been over to um, product development team. Or we're scaling up production of hand sanitizer. We are adding, adding more and more of the components necessary to do that. And we want to make that available to the hospitals and the rest of Columbia as, as Columbia needs help with hand sanitizer. We're doing the best we can to produce as much as we can as quickly as we can. The FDA gave us approval last week as a registered 503B uh, sterile compounder to make it for America, and that's what we're going to do. But we we wanted everybody to know that um, these respiratory meds are made by only two companies in the country, and we're both located in Columbia, South Carolina, and we're all working hard to do the best we can to provide what is needed for the treatment of the severe respiratory illness as well as provide as much hand sanitizer as we can pump out. That's good stuff, Lou. And, and you're you're looking for folks too, correct? That's correct. We've been um, continually hiring through all of this. We are we started a new training class just um, yesterday at 22 or three new folks. We are um, looking for chemists, microbiologists. We're even looking for part-time help. As many of you know, we have 860 um, educators, and our educator program was started last March. And they are showing up in record numbers to help us during this um, particularly a big spike in demand. And we couldn't do it without them. And it, it's been really great. We, we're also checking temperatures at the door. So it takes a little longer for folks to get in the door. It's just changed. But we're checking temperatures and making sure that we're keeping our workforce as healthy as we can. Great. Lou, well, thanks for all you're doing. Um, we really appreciate it. It's a pretty impressive operation you got, so uh, thanks for responding. Happy to be a member of the Chamber, and we're happy to help, and I applaud 
um, Mayor Benjamin for all that the city has done to support what we need in the, in the, the area as well as the chamber. And thank you all for allowing me to be a part of this. Great. Hey, thank you. Steve, uh, this has been, uh, I mean, you and I have gone through a few storms and floods together, but uh, this is kind of remarkable. And so while we've got we've got uh, chamber partners on the line, I'd love, if you don't mind, briefing us on um, your thoughts and the response that the city has made, which is unprecedented and, quite frankly, quite uh, y'all have been on the front lines of this. Uh, so if you don't mind just updating, that would be great. Sure. Uh, sure, Carl. Can you hear me okay? Is sound quality okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right. Super, super. I'm in my home studio. Yeah, it's not a home studio. <laughs> but uh, the um, – yeah, we've we, we tried to get ahead of, this, uh, uh, of the issue as, as best we could. Um, uh, the last week of, of February sent out a notice asking for us to pull together the Midlands Coronavirus Task Force uh, that you were present at, along with all of our – regional stakeholders from Fort Jackson University and other colleges, uh, state government, uh, our hospitals. And um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great meeting to start the discussion of, about what we could begin doing as a, um, as a, 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 a regional uh, group of, of, of leaders. You know, we sit at the, at the center of a, of a, uh, of a $43 billion uh, GDP uh, economy. When we started this thing, and we needed to figure out how best we can get arms around this public health crisis, because obviously we knew that it would emerge not not just into a public health crisis, but obviously into the economic crisis uh, that we're all uh, doing um, right now. Uh, the um, the numbers, as we as we all know, you know, are, are, are daunting. Um, uh, America right right now in South Carolina, I guess today will cross the threshold of. Uh, 300 cases. Um, everything I've seen in terms of uh, uh, epidemiological projections as it relates to uh, an epidemic or a, a pandemic like this, uh, we'll see those numbers uh, begin to double every every several um, uh, days. And, and as a result, um, we're seeing uh, some unprecedented impacts on our, on our economy. Uh, the uh, social distancing is changing the way in which we, we live and which we operate. Some of us um, are becoming maybe much more efficient at what we do, but in a consumer-based economy uh, like um, America has, uh, it has really brought our economy to a screeching halt. We're, we're, we're expecting, and uh, obviously, um, uh, an impending recession. Uh, we're we, uh, significant. Uh, I've seen numbers as high as maybe a. a, a 25% drop in, 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 in GDP, and really, um, uh, unless something unless something happens, no end in sight. If we can't get our arms around the public health crisis, uh, will we ever be able to get our arms around the economic crisis? And, and obviously, um, hearing more and more uh, 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 comments, even from the president and others, as to whether or not uh, the, these measures are are, uh, are 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 enough or important enough, I should say. Uh, for the economic um, uh, uh, concessions that we're making uh, right right now, um, I, I'll be happy in, in maybe in questions and answers to share my own my own positions. But I will tell you, more importantly, what um, what we're trying to do here in Columbia. We met uh, as a council, leading by example. We met over Zoom, our second um, such meeting, uh, and we'll continue to do so, um, trying to uh, model uh, that you can still get the people's work done. Uh, while also engaging in social uh, distancing. Uh, but we decided to move forward on Friday, passing what we call a Resilient Columbia. It's our first swipe at the economic uh, sustainability plan designed at, at, at trying to keep things moving, a continuity of government uh, uh, plan, but also a partnership with our, um, our businesses and our critical nonprofit organizations uh, that allow us to, um, to, to show our, our, our sister governments that you can act uh, even in these tough times, but also um, uh, 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 get the job uh, done uh, while social distancing. Um, uh, Resilient Columbia calls for a $6 million investment. Uh, half of that goes straight to our public safety organizations. We are asking our frontline folks, our police fire, um, EMS, 911, and even some of our um, uh, public works uh, officials who have to keep working. They are the defining characteristic of what it means to be a, 
uh, a developed nation who have to keep working to make sure they're providing for each and every one of us. They got to have equi- equipment that they need to keep themselves safe so they can go home to their families uh, uh, at the end of the day. So $3 million of that um, is going direct to our public safety and frontline uh, workers. Uh, we set aside a $1 million in, in what some of you are familiar with, the Loan Loss uh, Reserve Fund, uh, in which we're engaging with uh, some, of, some, some of the bankers in the line may have already been in, in, in touch with our, our, our city staff and our Office of Business Opportunities. If you have not, you most likely will in which we um, we set up a million dollars as a as a as a, uh, a loss reserve uh, a per loan. We're only going to do loans to small businesses up to twenty five thousand dollars, but we'll put the city's money up at risk first, that, so that hopefully we can we can stimulate we can use that as leverage to leverage a larger amount of funds available to our small businesses as they, as they all seek to aggressively reduce their overhead, but also continue cash flow allow them to stay open, um, um, uh, particularly a lot of our hospitality businesses are seeing some challenges, but this is for, 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 uh, for all businesses. Uh, so we st- we've established this million-dollar loan loss reserve fund, and we also set aside another million dollars uh, in, in, intended uh, for forgivable loans to uh, for-profit uh, businesses as well as non-profit businesses, uh, uh, targeting those non-profit businesses, non-profit organizations that provide critical Infrastructure. We've we've uh, we've set aside, for example, separate and apart from the half million, uh, two hundred fifty thousand for senior resources that conducts the Meals on Wheels program. We have a whole lot of uh, seniors here who are who are um, who are food insecure, don't know where the next meal is coming from. So we we decided that two thousand of them, we would make sure that they had meals over the um, next eight weeks, uh, five five days a week. That's being provided for. On the um, on the other side, on the uh, the small business side, uh, this is uh, just uh, meant. It's going to be available to uh, those who uh, those businesses under 100 employees, including uh, full-time employees and uh, part-time employees. Uh, we should have, um, if it's not up already, then by tomorrow, we're expecting uh, uh, this to be um, uh, up and running. Uh, but it's meant to be a small business stabilization package. Uh, to, to to help address businesses that are affected by um, by uh, by the COVID-19 uh, crisis, it's meant it's meant to be gap funding. As we work through, we're working through uh, some of the uh, programs coming through the SBA and whatever resources may be coming through the state as well. We're trying to do our very best to see how we can fit in, uh, in into these gaps uh, to try and help people. Um, uh, stay open. And the goal around some of these programs, like I mentioned, senior resources as an example, is really try to, trying to we, – we are part of an, of an interdependent and interconnected global economy. We are a microcosm of society. We are connected. Some of these red businesses are connected with folks all across the country and, indeed, all across the world. Uh, but for a period of time, we want to make sure that you're able to sustain those relationships but at the very same time focusing as much uh, as possible on creating an inward economy that focuses on the Midlands and how we can support businesses here in the Midlands. Uh, We're making these uh, funds available to small businesses because not only can they stay open and provide the services to their customers, as many have for years, but they're able to keep some of their employees on on staff who who can then take care of their families. They're able to pay their rent uh, to the landlord. We We realize that Avalon taxes, the way we pay for these public services, will take a hit next year. We want to make sure that our landlords are, are, are healthy and strong. Uh, and this, in fact, we can we can um, uh, also do all these things while while providing for the, the the food security needs of some of our most challenged populations. Then 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 things uh, begin to work themselves out. Right. Well, I'll take you on the journey here, y'all. This is this is going to be. Um, uh, some people are hoping it's going to be a couple of weeks. I doubt seriously. I think it's going to be several months, and we got to continue to, to be nimble. We need your ideas, as many ideas as possible. This was the first swing of the bat. Uh, we, we hope to have several swings over the next um, several months. Steve, while you're on that, um, you know, th- this has been changing so rapidly. The news and the different restrictions have moved so swiftly. Talk about, if you don't mind, just the thought of, I mean, I know the, the governor issued yesterday no more than three congregating. Uh, I think the um, the city has put in a curfew at night. Can you just explain that process so people are under, familiar with why y'all, y'all took that measure? Yeah, um, well, 
Um, I, I'm, I'm sure some of you are probably tired of hearing the term flatten the curve, uh, but, but for those of you who have not and those of you who don't mind hearing again, our, our goal is to make sure that there, there's a finite number of hospital beds here in, in the Midlands. There's a finite number of ICU beds. There's a finite number of, 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 of respirators and equipment that we'll need to keep people alive when it, when it, when it reaches a, 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 the critical stages in their lives. We've got to make sure that we slow down the spread of this virus. The virus will, will continue to spread. We're seeing some, some precipitous numbers uh, nationally uh, in, in, as the virus climbs in South Carolina, again, is very much like the rest of the case. I think we saw, Carl, the first, the, we saw the first 100,000 cases uh, uh, come after, after, what, 67 days, I believe. The second 100,000 cases came after 11 days. And the third 100,000 cases came in, in, in four days. We're, so our goal is to make sure we slow down the spread of this virus enough so that our, our, our limited capacity of, uh, of our health care system is not overwhelmed so that people cannot receive services. The only way we can do that, uh, according to every public health official whose opinion I value, is, 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 is to engage in active social distancing. We saw some major challenges, even as the governor and the president and others were, were, were working to spread the word about social uh, distancing uh, as, as, as they gravitated towards that position. Uh, that, that some of our younger people in particular were not taking it seriously. I was 29 once, uh, and 25, I was invincible then. Uh, and, and we saw uh, a number of folks uh, the planning house parties and, and different parties that we knew would lead to the uh, aggressive spread of the virus. So we decided that, at, uh, that a, a, a curfew that obviously has significant exceptions for those seeking medical help, those going to and from uh, work or working, uh, and obviously uh, the first-line public safety responders are exempt from the curfew. So your employees uh, are, are not inhibited, obviously, going to and from work uh, and working uh, through the curfew. But we, but we needed to have more tools in our toolbox to try and, through policy and practice, enforce more social distancing. Uh, the governor, um, as I understand, I, I watched a press conference yesterday. Uh, when the governor issued a state of emergency, there is a provision that does give law enforcement uh, the ability to disperse crowds of, of three or more. Uh, uh, the, uh, in, 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 so I'm, I don't believe the executive order required uh, that. I think the, the original emergency order actually enabled law enforcement. So he, went to, he wanted to highlight that uh, yesterday. Um, uh, it's, it's, um, so that, that's, that's the way I understand the, the governor's movement. Uh, we're going we're gonna to keep doing everything we can to, to model uh, the importance of social distancing, but as you all see in the news every day, some of our citizens just don't get it. But And, and I totally agree with that. Um, but listening to council last week, I mean, y'all y'all were early believers in, in uh, limiting capacity in restaurants. Y'all did everything you can to keep businesses open is what uh, y'all were initially mm -hmm. trying to do and mm -hmm. still are with um, with all the things y'all were doing. And I, I don't want to – the uh, the governor, in his order, was not looking at shutting business down at all. He was looking at social gatherings. I know, I know, the, I know. The, I mean, and, and and I, I have my my, my disagreements with the governor on on issues of, of import. I, I do know that he's aggressively uh, uh, doing his best to to balance the needs of the economy, the balance the needs of our, of, our, of our school system. It, it can't it can't be easy, um, um, but. But uh, I feel very strongly that we're going to have to um, we're, we're going to have to clamp down for a while to to just slow the spread of this virus. And exactly how it's done, obviously, got 50 states um, going about it 50 different ways. Um, we're we're going to have to determine, at very least, for the sphere of influence that we operate in here in the Midlands, uh, how we're going to play our role. And that's what I've been trying to do at, at, at the center of this uh, of this uh, of this economy. Yeah. Quick question. Uh, we got a uh, got a question from John Hopman. Um, where can we have volunteer opportunities to strengthen the manufacturing base, expand critical capacity uh, capabilities? Um, where can we have volunteer opportunities to strengthen the manufacturing base, expand? So I guess folks that are looking to pivot their normal business operations and, and to provide critical needs. Um, I, I think we could probably get with it 
Uh, I know the state chamber is working on some things there. Um, but we lack some rules regarding uh, essential business being open and classified that way, don't we, Steve? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. If, 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 if he's speaking about maybe what just what, what Lou uh, Kennedy just talked about, I mean, there, there are certainly opportunities uh, um, to do to do good and do well right now. Um, if, if, if you have if you have the ability to, to to retool your operations to help meet a pressing need that we know is out there, uh, I, w- I would urge you to to do so. You know, within the confines of of, of your ability, I'd also say that um, there there are new there are a, a bunch of new rules that come into in, into play uh, once the state of emergency has been declared around around procurement. So uh, if, if you know of of services that that your that your state government, that the federal government, that your local government uh, might be able to avail us, uh, ourselves of to make ourselves better and much more efficient, uh, and also maybe help meet some pressing public needs. Those are all very much uh, welcome. But if you have a unique ability uh, through your company to help us meet some of the pressing uh, public health needs of, of the day, uh, it, the, the, those ideas are, are most welcome. Everyone's reaching out and hard looking for the very best ideas right now. And if for those that are looking to retool or, or <clears throat> feel free to reach out to us at the chamber, uh, to me, and I'll, I'll be happy to help any way I can to get you in the right folks. Um, Steve, what um, the growing cases, you know, I think, Richland County is second behind Kershaw County in the number of cases. Do you see, have you seen any data where, uh, is it impacting any one group? Is it, um, have you seen any areas or what should we be doing differently to curtail that in Columbia? Yeah, well, as of yesterday, I think we saw 298 uh, cases and, and for some of us again who, who operate under the fiction that this is just for old people it is not for old people. We've seen um, we've seen infants actually come down with the virus as well. Obviously, the mortality rate and the probability of having some underlying uh, illnesses is greater if if you uh, if you if you tend to be older. Um, I think I think we should expect those those cases to continue to climb. Certainly, naturally, as we as we test. Um, um, uh, Carl, we're going we're going to start seeing a, 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 as testing expands. I should say. Uh, both uh, through VHEC, but also through our hospitals and others who are also now testing as well, who were not able to do so at the front end of this. We're going to see those numbers grow, and we're going to see them grow precip- or fairly precipitously, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the um, uh, hopefully, um, um, uh, hopefully they 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 begin to show maybe a, a, a lower rate of infection vis-a-vis those who are tested, and then certainly um, the mortality rate of um, well, begins to um, uh, hopefully doesn't climb the way it, it did in some other countries uh, as well. But but as a, as a country right now, you know we're we're um, uh, we're, we're, we're we've not yet peaked, and um, we, we we will soon become um, in terms of just pop, in the number of people, not populations, percentage of population, but the number of people who are infected with the virus, and uh, and we're going to need to really really advance. Uh, you know, aggressive um, uh, uh, national response. Uh, we have been engaged, and I would encourage you all, uh, as, as each of you have uh, relationships, and Carl has great relationships uh, through the Columbia Chamber with our, our congressional delegation. Uh, there, 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 there are a number of different uh, ideas, some good and some bad, on both sides of the aisle in both chambers uh, as to how we address this. Um, uh, but um, the, no one has a, a corner on good ideas. But I think to be very, as a matter of fact, when Lou was um, uh, speaking earlier, I had to switch over very quickly. Uh, Congressman Clyburn's chief of staff uh, called me back on, a, on an issue that we raised to them that was important uh, to Columbia on uh, regarding direct appropriations coming to local governments uh, of, of a certain size across the country. Um, some of the wording in the, in the House bill uh, would have not allowed that funding to come directly uh, to any city or county in, in, in the state, uh, uh, and, and, and obviously we're, we're, we are moving a, uh, moving forward fairly aggressively to try and meet some of the needs there. So it was important to us that uh, that um, that our voice be, be heard. 
But I would, I would encourage you to be uh, actively involved with your legislators on advancing positions that are important to your companies as well as to your community uh, as, as well. They need to hear from you right now. Um, doing nothing is, is, is not an option. I totally agree. Uh, with that, let me let me ask one quick question. Um, I got a couple of them. Um, mm-hmm. Steve uh, Baggett said, "Does a small going back to what the city passed uh, mm-hmm. on Friday? Does, does the small business stabilization package include include sole proprietors that may be impacted by the virus? Uh, it does. Mm-hmm. It does. Mm-hmm. Great. Yes. Uh, second, mm-hmm. uh, Sarah Marin says, um, when will the grant program for nonprofits be made available? How can nonprofits apply? Uh, the the goal is, I want to say council, we may be meeting as soon as tomorrow. Carl, of course, we passed it on Friday, and when I say that, we, we cranked this out all the way up until the beginning of the, of the council meeting, and we asked staff to have something for us by today uh, for council to um, uh, to opine on uh, by by tomorrow. So uh, as as soon as, I, I would say tomorrow or Thursday at the latest, uh, the, okay. uh, the, 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 the process uh, will, um, uh, will be clear. And, and and just as I think we're seeing in, in, uh, our tendency at all levels of government, uh, this this will be a, 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 a process that will be uh, a lot faster. Uh, you know, uh, time is of the essence uh, right now, and our goal to uh, to cut through uh, the red tape is is, uh, is real and a, a priority for for everyone. So, uh, let's say Thursday at the latest. I'd encourage you all if you if you don't visit the um, City of Columbia website regularly to do so, columbiasc.gov, columbiasc.gov, and, and all the rules uh, laid out there will, will, will be laid out there on the website. Yeah, and just for that, a follow-up question there from Kimberly. Mayor, how will other nonprofits be eligible for funding? For ABLE SC, we are seeing that people with disabilities and older adults are at disproportionate risk during this crisis. We are filling enormous gaps left by other service providers and are needing immediate assistance for our citizens with disabilities. Sure. No, no thank you. And, I, I, and Kimberly, I got your um, – I received your email uh, so that uh, Tamika replied uh, to it uh, as well. So, no, please, um, uh, those, those those gaps that, that may exist for um, uh, for some of our disabled uh, citizens that, that oftentimes in our, in our, our number of conversations – don't rise to the top of awareness of some of our, um, our public policy leaders. Please, I would, I would strongly encourage ABLE SC to apply. Uh, you know, this is this is meant to uh, this nonprofit stabilization package is meant to target uh, supplies our most vulnerable populations, uh, including our seniors, our, our high risk and underserved communities. Uh, so um, please put something before us and, and respond uh, post haste once the rules come out in the next day or so. Great. Uh- Mayor, uh, Jason with Home Team Barbecue uh, has a question. Um, are there any discussions revolving a refund of property tax? Yeah, um, I spoke to Aaron. Um, I think Aaron may have been the first or second person at Home Team that I called. I, I, I sit here and I, I literally call uh, business people and, and nonprofit execs uh, almost all day, every day, trying to source the very best ideas. I've advanced that idea. Um, obviously, as, as many of you know, I know Carl gets tired of, uh, of me talking about it. Uh, the, the portion of the property tax bill that, that's paid uh, uh, by our, our folks uh, every year, is, is the, the portion that comes to the city is lower and lower. We only get about 16 cents of the dollar uh, on a property tax bill. We have uh, intentionally not raised taxes. Over the last uh, 10 years, um, uh, not one dime. We've actually cut city tax mills uh, millage by 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 12 mills. Uh, the vast majority of the tax bill goes to the school district, and and the rest, uh, about um, 23, 24 percent, goes to the, the county. I have advanced that idea uh, because we've got to figure out um, um, we got to figure out how obviously we continue to provide the services to the public that the public. Needs, but at the very same time, I see a property tax relief as maybe in a, a very immediate way that, that helps stimulate the cash flow that our businesses have. So I want to tell you, I've, I've been discussing it with our, our CFO as recently as um, as this morning, 
Um, so, um, so we're trying to figure out how to make sure we have general fund reserves to continue to meet the needs of, 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 uh, of, of, of the city, of our, of our residents, but at the very same time are looking at some relief. And I will tell you, we're looking at relief now, not just in property taxes, but in hospitality taxes and uh, parking revenue. I mean, just everything we can do that might, um, might ease the burden on our, on our, uh, on our, on our business community and our, and our citizens. We're going to look at it. We've been good stewards uh, of, of, of those funds the last uh, 10 years. We'll continue to be so. Uh, but I will tell you that property taxes are at the top of my um, uh, list of considerations if, in fact, we uh, we show that we can continue providing services that citizens need uh, over this um, over this period of time. Great. That was a good question. Um, Mr. Ron Harvey, has a question for you, Mayor. Outside of public health needs, what are some of the other top needs or services that you are seeing that we can focus on to help our community? Um, well, public health is obviously the um, uh, the, uh, the number one uh, need in encouraging folks, encouraging everyone to do our, 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 our respective fair shares. I think it's as business leaders uh let let's let this this is going to this is going to be an opportunity for some of us to to really rethink our operations and think about obviously telecommuting in the way in which we have before if it is indeed possible and fit your business model uh and i say that because uh i, I do get constant uh emails and, and missives from employees who who do not believe they're essential uh uh um, uh, uh, employees and, 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 and feel at risk and come into work and want me to advocate on their behalf and, and, and certainly uh, I, I would say let's let's all look inward at our existing operations and figure out ways in which we can be more efficient. I will say that I've been so encouraged uh, the, the employers that I speak to uh, and I'd say the vast majority 95% of them, the primary concern uh, their primary concern has been for the families that they provide for their employees. I mean, I mean that that, that has been the, the kind of most encouraging, recurring theme uh, that I hear. But I think first, uh, let's make sure we're, let's make sure we're all looking inward at our own operations and thinking about how best we can we can influence the public health by 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 inculcating social distancing norms in our organization. Uh, that would be number one. And then, Ron, people like you. I mean, who I know, who I engage with regularly, who are very creative. I, I, I would think uh, you, you're going to see so many different opportunities to um, to do something better uh, as the world changes around us. We are talking about seismic tectonic shifts in our economy right now. So I think as, as you see those ideas, share them uh, with us. Um, you know, we, we do have the power of the pen, the power of policy making that might help us uh, uh, address some emerging need maybe before it emerges or certainly be, be able to give them the front side of it. Uh, we, we, we need your ideas right now. We need really good ideas, uh, particularly those that, that help some of our, 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 our business folks on, on, this, um, on, on this call get to the other side, uh, which, again, you know, is, 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 is as yet undefined. We're, 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 I, I still believe we're talking about months and not weeks, guys. Uh, regrettably, uh, but but if you see good ideas, we need to hear them. Uh, and um, obviously, uh, Carl can source questions. But for the, those of you who may not already have my email, it's Stephen dot Benjamin at Columbia SC dot gov. Stephen dot Benjamin at Columbia SC dot gov. Great, thank you. I've got one more question, uh, Mayor, and I think and, and that's and that's Stephen with a PH. I'm sorry, Stephen with a PH. Good. Um. And we'll put that on the web, by the way, and uh, and also a recording of this will be made for those that couldn't get in. We had a few people that uh, that didn't register early and, and were locked out due to space restraints. But um, let me – Sharon's got a question. I'm not sure if we can answer it, but we'll help you get the right answer, uh, Sharon. Working at hospital services, we provide the local hospitals and many clinics with linen, scrubs, et cetera, uh, our employees are essential to the community and have been stopped by local police. Without hospital badges, what can we provide at traffic stops to allow us to keep running smoothly? That's a legit question, uh, Sharon. I don't know if, uh, Steve, you've got a response to that, but we can we can certainly check with uh, Columbia Police on that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, please do. And I, I, was in, I was interrupted there briefly, uh, Carl. Uh, the, um, the, the, 
the uh, so making sure that police officers have what they need. Uh, well, the, was that question? she she's got employees at hospital services that are delivering uh, linen, scrubs, et cetera, to the hospitals, and they they have been stopped by local officers. Um, and without hospital badges, what can they provide at traffic stops to allow them to keep delivering? Okay. Uh, um, and so they don't have hospital. They don't have ID. They, they, yeah, they don't have ID. They don't have hospital badges. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, get get us that that very specific um, information and that challenge. That's something we can socialize pretty quickly with the police department. Yeah. Uh, they're they're going to continue doing their job and enforcing the curfew. Uh, if 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 you have anyone who's been cited uh, uh, doing their job, yeah, please let us know that uh, Chief Holbrook and Chief Kelly. Uh, they could done a really good job making sure that uh, the police department has the tools and also the discretion and the judgment that they need to to make to make smart calls, let people uh, go on with, with particularly commerce like that that's critical to the to the public health. So, um, um, but, but they are obviously going to continue enforcing the curfew as as, as they as they've been um, ordered to do for 61 uh, days or so. But but that's 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 a, that's a hurdle we can cross and what something we can we can easily. Uh, institutionalized and process if I know the specific challenge there. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mayor, you've been very generous with your time. I really uh, appreciate it, and thanks for keeping us safe. And, and y'all really have been proactive on this thing, so uh, thank you and Council for all well, your work. Well, well, I, well I, I'm, I'm available when you need me, Carl. And for those of you who, who don't know, um, Carl and I, we speak at least maybe every other day. Yeah. Um, every, every other day, so we stay in, in close touch. And um, if, if you need me, uh, y'all, we're, we're, we're here, we're praying, we're working, um, we need you just as much as you need us right now. So send us your ideas and, and let us all lead by example, and, and God bless y'all. Great. Listen, thanks again. Uh, again, for those that are listening, we appreciate you um, logging in and, and checking us out. We will have a recording of this uh, on our website, so uh, ColumbiaChamber.com. Uh, and we'll be having more of these as we uh, deal with this coronavirus. But y'all, please uh, practice your uh, your safe and social distancing. Wash your hands. Be careful. Uh, thank you, Steve. We really appreciate you. All right, Carl. You take care, brother.